you know, it's mm -hmm. so you reinvest. You got to re know to reinvest back into your business, you know, effectively, you know, and m most people don't, you know, it's, they're doing exactly what you're talking about. And then three years, you know, the bottom of their bell curve, they're like, oh, shit, I don't have any money. Well, you, you don't have any. You, you had three great years. You know, you paid yourself three times what you should have. You should have saved the money. Now you got three hard months, and guess what? You're done. Yeah. You know, because a gym opened up down the street. Welcome to Barbell Business. I'm AJ Roberts, and alongside me is Doug Lassen, Mike Bledsoe, and this week we have CEO of Elite FTS, Mr. Dave Tate. And Dave is a, a personal mentor of mine. He's a person who's had a massive impact on my life, and uh, he, he just recently did a Barbell Shrugged interview, and we wanted to get him over on the business side because, to me, I've I've really picked your brain over the years about business and uh, you've had a huge influence on training but you also had a huge influence on my career and so I want to get you on because you got a lot of good lessons that you've done, gone through and, and a lot of things you did differently than most people do when starting a business. Uh, for those that don't know, Dave uh, was a former personal trainer. He trained at Westside Barbell and then he began uh, almost an educational based business uh, that so focused solely on giving back to the industry and passing on the knowledge he'd gained over the years and he found a way to monetize that and really create uh, a career out of it. Uh, so Dave, welcome to the show and happy Thank to have you here. Thank you, AJ. So, Dave, one of the things uh, that uh, I, I know from knowing you is that when you when you went to, into business, you had a lot of mentors that you worked with who kind of talk about stuff. And one of the things you, you looked into was opening a gym. And we have a lot of listeners to the show who are looking to open a gym or own a gym. And oftentimes they are just basic trainers and, and all they want to do is train. And so, um, you know, just like to get your thoughts on that and going into business in, on that sense. Um, because I, I, it's so funny when you talk to people, they think that they're a great trainer so that they'd make a great business owner. Well, there's, there's always a debate of, you know, the – the technician and the entrepreneur, which falls back into the, the e-myth, you know, mindset. But to answer your question in regards to early mentors and early, I don't even know if I'd call them mentors. They're just, I was fortunate enough to have people who took an interest in, in me and they saw something in me that, you know, I didn't see in myself. So I, I went to them with the problem and that was time. You know, I, I wanted to have a family. I wanted to have a life. And I, I could not do that, you know, being in the gym training people for 60 to 80 hours a week. And if you're billing 50 billable hours, that's, there's cancellation. So you're there all the time. The only time I wasn't there was the time that I was training. And the rest of the time was, you know, 6 in the morning till 9 at night. And there was there's no life. Yeah. You know, and so one of the biggest things for me is I wanted to be able to have mobility as far as where I was to be able to conduct business and to work. That's the most important above financial and anything else. That was the most important. Mm -hmm. You know, I wanted to be able to work from anywhere, regardless of what it was. So we decided against the facility. Um, in hindsight, probably a little bit because I was burned out, you know, and because of the, the mobility type thing. I didn't want to just leave one place which was already pretty damn secure. Yeah. You know, I probably could still be working there now. You know, the client list, I had a waiting list. I had no problem with clients. You know, I knew how to get the clients. That that wasn't an issue. I was just I was just going to trade one one environment for another one, which would have been one that I was going to own, which was going to come with more headache than what I already currently had. So, in in my margin was pretty good with what they were as far as how they were compensating and taking care of me. So there was, that really wasn't an issue. So we, we decided to go a little bit different route with, you know, the internet retail to be able to support the, the education. Cause you always have to have what I learned early on. And I went to see Bill Parisi as well to kind of investigate the side of the training center a little bit more and talk to a few other people that had training centers. You always have to have something else to support the revenue. 
because it, it is still and back then it was more so it was there was a seasonality behind it so what are you going to do when the when the revenue is low what's going to compensate that revenue on the other end and that kind of carried over to what i do now you know we have our the core of our business is strength equipment but there's a seasonality issue with that so when that's down you know in schools and you know gyms are not setting up what's taking that difference you know what's balancing out the revenue for that you know otherwise you have these big slumps in revenue and so forth so that those were my first advisors and then once i got into business and realized and had my oh shit moment you know you you leave an income then you have no income then you don't know how the hell you're going to replace the income you know looking back it took over 10 years to replace the income Mm. the um i knew right away and it was one of my earlier mentors that told me as we were discussing business plans and my business ideas that I had no idea what I was talking about (laughs) and just straight up told me you have no idea what you're talking about and um, so I asked for his help and he said I'm not going to help you he says all I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a piece of advice and what his advice was as soon as you can afford it I want you to hire and I want you to go through the e-myth mastery program Mm. and it's different now than it was back then so I can't comment on how it is now but back then it was like 600 or 800 dollars a month and it was a five-year program oh wow so Mm -hmm. i went through that program and that was that was my income that was my compensation was while i was going through that you know learning how to run my business you know not somebody else's business but my business you know on basic fundamentals and there's you know throughout that process and through a couple other mentors I, i met along the way it's just from seminars um and mentors i see as people who just kind of drop in at the right time and give you the right advice and then they're gone and you may never talk to them again advisors are people that i see that are in place mm-hmm. that are go-to people for when you really need help um but you know i had a mentor explain the difference to me between a value-based business and a revenue-based business and then i had to make a decision you know so i i I totally related to the value-based business model and what I wanted to do and went with that route. And then through a couple more years, you know, I learned the hardest thing in business is to find advisors you trust. And those got to be people that are willing to, to call you out on your own bullshit. Because, you know, if you're a business owner, you also are very good at being able to um, legitimize anything that you do, you know, you will find a reason, you know, for why you did it. And, um, <laughs> Mike's, and, Mike's smiling way too big. Yeah. I, mean, I can you justify will. anything. Yeah, <laughs> you, I mean, exactly. You can justify it and that's fine. You know, you should be able to justify it, but you got to have people around you that can call you out on it mm. that are much smarter than you, <laughs> you know, and it's my whole job. Yeah. <laughs> so now I have a group of, you know, five or five or six people from different disciplines and they are not, you know, some of them are in the powerlifting realm. I have other ones that have, they don't even know what powerlifting and strength training is. You know, I don't want them to know because I want them to offer a unique perspective. So when I speak to them, I'm getting insight that's coming from a completely different industry, which may be dealing with the same problem, Mm -hmm. but it's different when you're in the if you stay focused and everything is all in the same industry you're going to get the same type of answers you know go outside of the industry what you perceive as a problem to them it's like just this little peanut like why are you worried about that Mm -hmm. you know here's what we would do boom boom it's done Mm -hmm. and you're like man everybody else i talk to you know who does the same thing i do says this is a big deal well no it's not and they might even see it as an enormous opportunity, depending on what it is. Yeah, yeah every mistake is, you know. And <clears throat> so you, you got to have those people. You really do. And I, I use them, you know, weekly. I use them all the time. You know, they just – they at one, at one point, you, you weren't even allowed to post anything without it going through someone else because, like, of – the, the, in terms of the company and then what you had set out as like the values and that and then of course like you know we're very passionate people mm-hmm. and that's something I think has driven you in every asset every, every endeavor you've done has been driven by passion but sometimes that passion like you said we can justify anything we say do spend and so sometimes like you need the filter and you need the people yes. around you to be like this I totally get why you're doing this but doing this 
creates a bigger problem. Yes, I, I learned that one the hard way when it comes to, I mean, articles and stuff like that that I'll put out, training logs and even even stupid humor crap, you know, I just put out and grammar errors, spelling errors, all that other kind of stuff. Hmm. But if I have to put out anything that is, um, I call it like a state of a union address for, you know, <laughs> for a business owner. And you really do, like quarterly, you really should put something out because you always have to look at your business as a model of, not saying that you want to sell it, but you need to actually act like your business is something that you're trying to create a valuation for that you will be able to sell down the line. And you're creating the best systems and putting the best systems in place to create that valuation. Mm. So when that person does come to try to, or you go to market and they want to acquire you, you may say, okay, I want $1 million. And then they're going to say, we want to give you 200000 and then you're going to say, well, I want a million dollars. They're going to say, well, what kind of contract do you have in place for your employees? What kind of non-compete do you have? Oh, you don't have it? 700. What do you have in place as far as your suppliers? You're selling supplements. That's a secondary source of income. What supplier agreement do you have in place with this? There's another 100,000. Um, mm. And you just keep chipping away. Mm. You know, is your, is your building zoned? Is everything zoned? Is everything where it should be? Oh, No. There's another hundred thousand. So you mm. need to do your due diligence to be able to create that that fortress around the business to be. A, and if you're doing that, and if you're building it like some at some point in time, we are going to go to market and try to sell it. Every system you create is going to be the best system you can create. It's not going to be some Jimmy rig bullshit that you got to throw together. Because all you're going to have to do in time is go back and redo it. So you may as well do it right the first time. Do the due diligence to create the actual value of the business for that. Not because you do want to sell it. You know, it, it may or may not happen in most cases. 90% of the cases, you're going to go out of business long before you're ever going to be able to sell it. <laughs> but you're going to set the, the whole idea in business is to create the best business practices you possibly can. Mike's been talking to a lot of gym owners who are struggling. And so they say, well, maybe I'll sell my business. And they come to him and say, what, what do you think is valued at? And he starts looking at it and uh, they don't really like the answer because most of the time they don't have contracts. And uh, he looks at their equipment and says, well, it's, it's probably this secondhand equipment now. And he gives them, a, you know, 100 grand, maybe 150. And they, they were thinking, you know, a million or something for their gym. Oh, I, I, yeah. I have a, yeah. actually, I've interviewed some gyms recently where I go, how many, um, how many, like what's your base receivables? Like what, how much, how many, uh, like contracts do you have with your clients? They go, Oh, we don't do contracts. And I go, Oh, okay. So, you know, maybe like 15,000, you got that much in equipment. And they're like, what? But I have this many members. I was like, you don't have any members because the moment someone else takes this facility over, they could be gone. Yeah. So you, it's not worth anything. So like, it's probably, I tell people it's just worth what you would pay for this equipment. If and, that. Yeah, and it's second hand. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, you might keep those people, but the, yeah, the contracts. Because yeah, everyone rents all, their, their little it, warehouses and, and no gym, one owns yeah. anything. You and, know? Yeah. and a gym, the all the value is in the members, really. Exactly. And, yeah. and and most people can't even tell you the lifetime value of that member. Right. They have no clue or no comprehension on how to even figure it out. That's a basic business metric. You right. know, and these are things that people should know because that's going to determine your advertising. It's going to determine how much you, you know, how many free sessions or if you're going to give a free month or whatever. It makes sense to give a free month if, you know, the lifetime value is going right. to be two years. Right. You know, if the lifetime <clears throat> value is two months, you're giving a free month, you're a dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, this is just basic business, you yeah. know, and and I can sit back and laugh and, 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 you know, crack jokes and all that now. But, you know, years ago, I didn't know this either. You know, you make None the mistakes, yeah. you know, and you, you try to help out by telling people now and, you know, the, the frustration I'll get because I do, I do a mentorship thing for business where I'll have people come out for two days and, and work with them on the value-based business planning. And typically what I'll ask for before they come out is um, I want to see their P&L statement and I want to see their balance sheet. They look at me like a deer caught in the headlights. Mm -hmm. I'm like, if I – well. I can help you, you know, as far as the planning and then as far as, you know, developing a story and the values and all that other kind of stuff. But, man, if you don't have 
you know. Sounds like the conversation I had with my tax account. Yeah, I mean, if you don't have a freaking. <laughs> what am I, wanted me to give my revenue expense. I'm like, huh? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, if you don't have a basic P&L except for the end of the year when you file taxes, how in the hell do you know what's running your business? You yeah, I, I, that, that drives me crazy. I like mean, it's not having reporting and regular reporting. And, and when I know more about, like, I live in Southern California and I own a gym in Memphis, Tennessee. And I know more about our numbers than the person I'm sitting, I'm sitting in their gym asking them about their numbers. And I know more about. Them. Yeah. And I'm like. And you should. I mean, that's part of being a business yeah. owner. You need yeah. to know your metrics inside now. Would you say this so is why most people shouldn't? like open a gym or even go into business for themselves like like you hear this a lot of people were in this you know with the internet everyone can become an entrepreneur but really most people are not entrepreneurs they think they are and what they really are is a good number two or you know they're 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 they they're, they have some inspiration but in terms of being a business owner like there's so much that goes into it that you have to and we were talking about you have to have the passion to learn like like, you know, you, you came from a lifting background and, and you went to school for, for, you know, to be a trainer and, and, and that was what your career was. When you shifted into this, like you had to take on new responsibilities and learn new things. Um, and it had to be driven by the passion to get the message out there and continue to help people. Like you had such a big mission that the business side of it was like, okay, I have to learn this. I have to become a master of it. And this is what I've, I've really seen over the years, just like how ahead of the curve you are on business i talk to other people who own businesses and it's like they have like an a plus and like training knowledge and then as a business owner like they wouldn't even get an f you know they'd be kicked out of class and, yeah. and, they're, and they're like they, they think they're gonna you know make a million dollars and it's like huh like well how? even worse they're resistant to it they, they don't want to do the business stuff yeah they're trying to find someone else who can do it for them which is not gonna fucking work no i mean if 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 my life, Matt, if my life aim is to live, learn, and pass on, which is basically what it is, and I want to do that through a business, you know, then it's vital that the business stays sustainable, you know. So I can't, I can't fulfill my life's purpose, you know, without keeping the the business sustainable. That's not saying I wouldn't find a way if it, you know, tanked, you know, I would still find a way, but. That that's part of it. I mean, when you open a business, you quit being the, your days of being a technician, dude. They're done. You know, you're mm-hmm. now a business yeah. owner, mm-hmm. and the word entrepreneur, that's, I kind of that's tough, by the way. Like, it is like that's that's not something to be taken lightly. Like uh, mm-hmm. that's something I struggled. No, with you know lot. why? Yeah. Because now you're fucking competing with Donald Trump. You're competing with people who are graduating with MBAs. You're in the real fucking world now. Yeah, you're competing with other business owners who know what the hell they're doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The only thing that you have that you can compete against them with is the passion you have for your own business and your ability to learn how to grow your business you'll never be able to compete with the guy that's got the mba as far as business knowledge but if your passion is is strong enough and you learn how to operate your business effectively enough you'll be hiring that fucker with the mba yeah all right so that's that's the whole idea is you know you have to live and you, you you need to learn it you know to be able to grow and you can't try to avoid resistance and you can't try to avoid you know the the hardships that come with it because it's there's more there's way way more hardships and way more resistance than there ever is success in having a business mm. way more yeah, you, and if there's not you're not doing it right yeah you said earlier i thought this really couldn't have been more true that your business no matter what you do will not be what you think it's going to be never. it's never going to be exactly mm. how, how you picture it in your head the day you start that business it's not going to be what you picture <laughs> no, and there's and nothing it's, you can do about it's, it it's funny because people will ask me all and this is the question i'm asked really frequently is when you started this did you ever imagine it would be what it is and actually no I imagine to being way bigger than what it is, <laughs> <You know? laughs> but but no, you know I've right. never really thought about it. You know, it's I never really thought this is what I want. You know, I never thought outside of actually my first plan was like a five year plan. Mm-hmm. I've never thought any more than about a year out. And then when we hit the recession, I realized I can't even do that anymore. Mm-hmm. I have to think month to month to be able to survive. I can't. There's no use in trying to plan a year anymore. Right. You know, when we when that hit. Yeah, a lot and, of people say three month goals and, and ten year goals. It's like you gotta know kinda where you're going yeah. and then it's like little steps along the way. Yeah, your 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 aim, your passion should tell you where you're going. Right. Yeah. You know, so that that to me I don't need that ten year thing. I know that's gonna drive me wherever I'm gonna go. Mm-hmm. Um 
but you know the three month and one month now i think it's a little bit more three month it's a little bit more attainable but at the same time most people i know who have a business if they if their sales stopped they're done within two months yeah. you know they don't have the working capital to be able to sustain you know two months yeah mm-hmm. and that's that's not just small business that's going all the way up to some of the biggest businesses in the well, industry the biggest mm-hmm. bi- businesses are paying a payroll with credit most of them uh, are on revolving credit so it's not yeah a, i would have I mean, ulcers the, if i had to do they're, that they're in a worse spot than we are i mean small business owners probably have uh more absolute value than some of the big ones it, it could be i mean it's 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 a business philosophy is basically you know to run the business on other people's money yep you know and and i mean that's People do a su- very success. I would have ulcers. <laughs> you know, I, I wouldn't be able to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not saying that you shouldn't have a credit line. I mean, one of the first sure. things I tell anybody who has a training business or any business is you need to go to your bank right now and get a credit line. I'm not talking a credit card. Get a credit line for whatever they're going to give you because you never know what shit's going to hit. And when it hits and you need that 30 grand or that 40 grand, you're going to want that credit line. And it's may, sitting there so you can use it. Yes, it doesn't so mean you're going to like. You don't have gonna, to use it. If you don't use it, you're not going to incur well, interest or anything yes. like that. So you yeah. talk to, actually, you talk to a lot, of, lo, a lot of people. And even if they needed to invest in something, you know, like an EMF course, because they, they don't know anything, they, mm-hmm. they need to invest in something. Mm-hmm. Like they can't get together a couple extra thousand bucks because a lot of trainers pay themselves 100% of what they make. It's like the money comes in and they go, thank you. And if they have a good month, they're like, oh, now I can get this new new thing for the gym. Pop they bottles. don't have credit lines. They don't. Yeah. It's month to month to month in terms of income. And, you, you know, just in terms something you said earlier that I think is key for anyone who does open a gym is you're not the technician anymore. You're the freaking business owner. The quicker you can get out of being the technician, the better it will be for the business. I've, I've always been told that, you know, you, you need to, you need to pay yourself what, what you need to sustain the lifestyle that you want to live, you know, and it was just starting the business and hell, even 15 years into a business, I'm not living the lifestyle that I want to live. I'm living the lifestyle that's the cheapest for me to sustain so I can keep putting the money back into the business to do the things that I want to do. You know, just last year I made a huge investment. You know, and and trying to move the business forward. Now, I could have done that or I could have went out and bought a new house, a couple boats, a couple cars, you know, (laughs) and flashed them all over fucking Facebook with a new Rolex and my new motorcycle, all this other bullshit. What's that going to do? How's that going to help me push my aim forward? You know, if I'm trying to, you know, pass on and to help people become better and educate and all that, how exactly that going to help anybody but me? You know, it's. Mm -hmm. So you reinvest. You got to re- know to reinvest back into your business, you know, effectively. You know, and m- most people don't. You know, so they're doing exactly what you're talking about, and then three years, you know, the bottom of their bell curve, they're like, "Oh shit, I don't have any money." Well, you you don't have any. You, you had three great years. You know, you paid yourself three times what you should have. You should have saved the money. Now you got three hard months, and guess what? You're done. You know, because a gym opened up down the street. Yeah, and if you're if you're really, you know, I always talk about the reason most of us are in this is to create transformation in as many lives as possible. And all that's your mission is to 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 pass on so that you can really impact and change and, and you know give people something that they wouldn't get anywhere else. And if you go out of business, you can't do that. You know, no. you literally, and at the end of the day, you screw everyone over because you were too stupid to figure out the basics in order to carry that that mission forward and most people i find in, in fitness that that's that's kind of the inherent like higher calling right it's to to change and impact as many people as possible and so you have to you can't like be you know flashy flashy because if you're not putting it back in the business to grow uh one thing we uh, over you know mike does Bob shrug is is building the team you know uh, he could easily have carried on with four people but with 20 something people now yeah with Bob Bell shrug because of the long term the big vision i think most people probably who, who aren't doing that don't have a big vision you know that they, they, they really don't know what why they're doing what they're doing, and they, they haven't figured it out yet. Well, they that's, just, hi, that's hiring at a strategy yeah. too. It's not value not, based; not, it's not because, money based. Not because you just want to hire someone. Hiring someone that you know is going to make if you fill that position, that's going to put you in a ten times better spot a couple of years from now. It's like hiring at a strategy versus just hiring to give somebody a job too. Which bring, which brings up another mistake I see a lot too is people don't know what their net profit margin is. So when they go and hire somebody and say they want to pay them forty grand, they're like, oh, it's just forty grand. 
it's like, well, how much money do you, you know, how, how many sessions do you have to sell to profit 40 grand? Because that's yeah. not the same as the 40 grand you're paid. Yeah. It profits completely different than what you're paid. There's a whole lot of shit that happens before that end number, <laughs> you know, and it, it never works out, oh, yeah. you know, the same way. And Add it's, 30% to whatever you want to pay somebody to. Exactly. Because There's you, the payroll cost oh, as geez. well, you know, and this, with, with business and with staff and so forth, you know, as the owner comes responsibility. You know, you're not only responsible to, you know, passing on and what you were talking about, giving back and, you know, trying to help other people, but you're responsible for, you know, the food on the table of every one of the employees that you have. You're responsible for, you know, the food that's going into their kids. You know, it's we're, we're in retail, so I, it extends, man. I'm responsible for a lot of our suppliers who were, were their number one, right. you know, retail outlet so mm-hmm. i'm responsible for you know their employees their 80 employees all their kids and, and it stretches on and on and on and on you know with that and my responsibility with that it's a heavy burden you know to load and it's something that i take serious so if if there's you know a vendor that we're the majority of their business the last thing i'm ever going to even consider doing is pulling that away from them and moving it somewhere else because i can save five percent you know, I just fucked 80 people's lives, you know, for 5%. What a greedy fucking bastard, you know. How is that living, live, learn, pass on, helping other people? How's that help? Yeah. You know, I would rather help them, you know. And granted, you're going to negotiate terms and do whatever you can do. Sure. To, you know, I mean, <laughs> you know that, that's still part of business but as you're well. Gonna, you're not going to screw people over yeah. unnecessarily so you can get ahead just a little bit. Right? Yeah. But you're not yeah. looking to get screwed either. Well, exactly. You, you, have to, you, you gotta you, watch that. Yeah, because you have you have the responsibility of taking care of your own people over taking care of the rest of. Oh the yeah, group. and when you're in business, you you are getting screwed. Everybody is every. <laughs> well, here's actually, some certainties right. that come with opening your own business. Oh, yeah, doggy dog. The, the day you start your business is the day you started making two hundred thousand dollars a year. Right. That's yeah, a given. The, the outside perception is no, that you're yeah, rich now. Yeah, exactly. You, you, got, you, got you now made. make two hundred. You right. may not have a fucking dollar in income, <laughs> but you're making two hundred thousand dollars a year now. Right. You, you can make loaded. ten million dollars oh, a yeah. year and spend eleven million dollars doing it, and everyone thinks you got it made. Yes. Yes. So then all the predators are going to come, and they're going to start trying to screw you and sell you a whole bunch of shit you don't even need. We call it. Was it the snipers come out? Snipers. They come out. Oh, it's ridiculous. Yeah. The snipers and the down critics. The street, you know. Pick you up. <laughs> it's crazy. Everyone, everyone becomes your coach then, right? They you should do this. Good that's point. Right. Fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> never, that's what I thought about that. Yeah, right. that's what I get. That the power lifter in me comes out. How much you squat? Ah. <laughs> it's like it's like people trying to tell us how to run the show. Oh, of I'm course. Like, oh yeah, we we got like uh, you know 100,000 people subscribing. Uh, yeah, go screw yourself. Well, 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 we, we, you, you learn to listen to the metrics, right? You learn to listen to, like, oh, to God, the I numbers. Can't you said that. And like you, you make a move, Wait for and you people it. might there might be some people you know saying shit publicly. But you go look at your numbers and you're like, well, we doubled our sales or we, we, you know, we increased, you know, readership by this much. Like this proves those people are wrong. But no matter what you say to those people, they're right. Like they know well, better. The- I, I, call that the, I call that the vocal minority, you know, and, and when you're online now, your metrics are pretty damn strong. Yeah. When you're online, yeah. you're seeing traffic, you're seeing page views, you're seeing all, you're seeing conversion rates, you're seeing all kinds of stuff. You, if you don't know what's going on with your online business, and then you need you need some help. You need to hire somebody like AJ to show <laughs> there's, you. There's always this. This stuff applies to gym businesses. Exactly. Too. You can see all these conversion rates yes. in your gym. Yeah. It's not. It's not that I mean, much you different. need to know your analytics, and you need to know how to study your analytics. And if you know that, the vocal minority can say whatever they want to say. Yeah. And you can listen to it. Maybe it will help with some marketing. But it's really, actually, it's kind of irrelevant because the 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 silent majority. You know, right. the, the clicks and the, the conversion rates and all the things you do see, that's really servicing your customer. Serving your customer isn't appeasing the vocal minority, which I think a lot of people mm. try to do. Yeah. You, you, you said something to me once, as actually you recommended the book, the the, well, the 40 Out Power Laws. Is that the book? The 40 Laws, Laws of Power. Yeah. And uh, the reason was is because you, you were talking about, you know, the haters will, will say shit. The people who praise you, like, they stay silent. They don't come. Like, people aren't coming out to be like, that was fucking awesome. Everyone comes out to say, like, how much you suck. And emotionally, if you allow those people to influence you and your decisions – it 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 it's it, you're really operating 
off of the wrong imp- opinion because that's what you see, but that's not the majority, like you said. And I think too many business owners don't know their numbers, and so that becomes their majority because they don't actually know what the heck's well, going on. They'll see, they'll <laughs> see 10, 10 things of praise, and they see one negative thing, and the one negative thing is what's going to stick out in your mind anyway, too. Yeah, you know? I mean, it's still that's, I mean, to me, it's kind of all irrelevant because, you know, as the business owner, you're, you're, your role – is to drive and grow the company towards the the aim that was established. That's your that's your main. You're you're the strategy guy, mm-hmm. you know, and to implement the strategy. Now, the bigger you get, you want to have people underneath you that you can help to implement the strategy. But your your role still is to yeah. drive the strategy and to drive that vision. That takes creativity. That takes knowledge. That takes continuing education. That takes the work of you know networking with people smarter than you are. Mm-hmm. If you get caught up in all this irrelevant bullshit, all that it is doing is taking you away from what you're hired to do. It's taking away you from your own job. Yeah. So as a business owner, how would you feel if you have somebody in customer service that spent 20% of their time just screwing around on Facebook and not servicing the customers? How would that make you feel? Yeah. You would be pissed off about it. Yeah. So the, why are you spending 20% of your time not doing your work that you are required to do as the business owner? Because that's Typical. That's essentially what you're doing when you're appeasing the critics and dealing with all this other kind of crap that you don't want to deal with. And every one of us will tell us you can have a situation. The legal situations are usually the best ones to <laughs> to um, to to find this one. And you will have legal problems eventually, right? It's guaranteed. <laughs> it's guaranteed. <laughs> all right. So so you get you get served some type of legal notice and you read it and you're like, oh my god. And then for the next week, you're telling yourself at least thirty different stories in your head. Sure. Yeah. All right, and then you contact it's the, the worst attorney. ones too. Oh yeah, they're terrible. They're yeah. awful. <laughs> then you contact the attorney. Then you come up with the plan, and he sends the whole thing out. Then it kind of goes back and forth. And by the time it's all done, it's never, it's never any of the stories you told in your head. <laughs> All right, so after you've been through this a few times, you get the notice, and you're like, okay, send it to the attorney. Sure. Yeah. Then they'll call you, and they'll discuss it, and you'll say, okay, here's the plan. And then you send it out, you completely forget about it for the next four, because they work in 14-day cycles, which the first time through drives you fucking crazy. But um, <laughs> and then, but, but the, the key point is there, and this was pointed out to me by another mentor of mine when I was going through some, some shit like this, is you can never, ever, ever, no matter how bad it is, let it impact your creativity because you will go out of business from that far before you're going to go out of business from any legal action or anything that's going to come your way most of the legal actions are going to end up you know sorting themselves out right. and never be most of them are either predators just trying to suck something that they're not going to get anything from most of them end up just going away and you know a couple cycles you know a couple of the, of course the attorneys are trying to make their money Sure. You know, you know, you know how that works. Like, hey, let's make this last a little bit longer. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, if, if you spend all your time making up these these stories in your head, when are you making up the story on how to sell the company? Yeah. And how to move the next product line or how to launch the next boot camp or how to do, when are you doing that? Yeah. Oh, you're not? Think back to that customer service rep. Now, how would you feel if she wasn't doing her job at all? Yeah, think- she wasn't answering the phone. She wasn't doing anything. That's you right now. Yeah. yeah. You know, and it people, comes from a confidence man. standpoint. Like, I think most people, like, the, you know, mastering self state is a, a huge thing of being a business owner. Like, you have to have the confidence as a business owner that you are on the right path and that you do know what's right for the company. And you can't be. You, you can't waver during those times of struggle. I know with, with, with Elite FTS, you've had a lot of up and downs over the years, and it causes you to go back and look at things, but your mission has been the same since the beginning. Like You've never wavered from, from you what can. you knew the company was, and you've been presented with opportunities that, I'll use the word fast money, that would have, would have given you growth in a certain area, but when you look long-term, you're like, that actually pulls me away from what I want to do, and that's not, I'm not going to do it. So, I, I mean... Talk a little bit about that and how, like, you know, you deal with those situations because I know that you've gone through so much, like, up and down and, and been hit so many times and yet come through in a stronger every time, it seems, from that. Um, I guess the roots back into that are going to fall into my childhood of getting beat up and bullied all the time. So, I mean, I kind of learned at a young age that adversity comes with life. You know, in that you, you need to learn and grow from it, you know. And so from that, I was able to become the person that I am. 
So, you know, adversity is, is not something that I shy away from. It's, I'm not saying I fucking enjoy it by any means, of, you know, but I know I'll learn from it. So whenever, you know, another big swat in the face comes or, you know, anything like that comes, it's, you know, you take a deep breath and you're like, oh, shit, you know, then it's okay, what, what's the lesson here? What am I going to learn? And maybe you won't learn it right now. You know, maybe you're going to learn it a year from now. Maybe you just got to handle it. You need to move forward and, you know, do what it is. But if your vision is strong enough, so I think I can answer the question with two things, vision and values. If your vision is strong enough, you know, and, and you're tied into that and you yourself are so bought into that vision, nothing's going to deter you, you know, nothing, you know, that that's what you want to do, you know, and to me that the live, learn, pass on means more to me probably than anybody else in the world. You know, it, it means something very, very deep to me that will go to my grave that probably started back when my first wrestling coach told me I could win when everybody else told me I couldn't, you know, so it's, it's ingrained. It's going to go to my grave. That is what, what I am. So if your vision is not strong enough, you haven't found the right vision yet. So that's the first, the first advice is that the second one is when you're dealing with the adversity and all those type of things, you got to fall back on what values you have set up. Most companies have, you know, their, their mission statement, which is some made up bullshit that they just copied off somebody else. It doesn't mean anything. It's not personal. They don't have an aim. They don't have anything like that. Those have to be defined and mean something. They have to mean something to the owner first. Then it has to be re-messaged to be able to mean something to everybody that works for you. And then the messaging has to be reworked to extend to anybody who does business with you. So when they know you and they come across you and when they leave you, they know who you are, what you stand for, what you do. That has to be consistent across all staff. After that, you need to know what values are you going to operate from. And most people don't put a, any bit of thought into that. And when I sit down with people to go through this exercise, I'll say, well, what, what are your values? And they give me this blank stare and you get this shit like, well, um, honesty and, um, well, loyalty. I, I'm, you know, loyalty is really important. And, um, well, trust. Like, well, you just said the three thing, the same thing three fucking times. Um, but anyhow, most people don't know because they've never really thought about it. Right. They've never thought about what they stand for and where it comes from. So I'll ask them to, to take 20 minutes and write down, you know, any, any name, anybody who's influenced them throughout their life from the time they're born until the present day. You know, it could be a cartoon character. It could be a movie character. Or it could be a book character. It could be fictional, non-fictional. It could be a coach. It could be a parent. Just write them down. Write down 20 different names. So they'll write those names down. Then I'll come back and I'll say, now I want you to write down two sentences why you know, with each person. And then when you come back and you, you can look through them, it stands right out. You know, you just go through with a highlighter and you highlight the keywords right there is the values hmm. right there is what they stand for. That's who they are. All those people, cause people define and help define who you are. All right. And so there's that social aspect. Then there's your own psychological aspect. What well, you wrote them down. Okay. So now you have, you know, the external aspect and the internal aspect telling me right here on this page, this is what you stand for. These are your values. Now let's define these and how you're going to build a business. Because whenever you get stuck and you don't know what to do, and you're like, man, I could go this way, I could go this way, I just don't know. And then you look down and you read those, you know. Oh, well. You immediately know because it's right there. That's when integrity comes in. Are you willing to do and stand by your values when it's easier not to? Mm -hmm. So if you're going to be a person of integrity, you will. Um, the only time this exercise has not worked is um, I had an NFL player that was going to make his own, build his own facility. And um, a former NFL player, he, could, he didn't have any way right now. And, it, I mean, it almost broke my heart. I'm like, you got nobody, like no coach, nobody, nothing. So I flipped the script. I said, write down everybody, everybody you fucking can't stand and why. I bet it took him two minutes, and the page was full. <laughs> oh, man. It was full. And and he, said, was, he was probably the complete opposite to all those people. Yes, I said your values are the opposite of every one of those things. Yeah. And actually, they're so strong that you wrote this down in two minutes. This is what you have to run with. You know, so they mm -hmm. define that. Now what you have, it's not a business plan, but you have yourself a, a very, very good life plan. 
mm-hmm. you know, and how you want to move forward. And then from there, you can structure all those other things around that. And that's where I went to a value, you know, a, a value based business compared to a business based upon just straight resource or finances. Because if it's based upon your own values, you're always going to be able to sleep at night. You know, well, I take that. I mean, it's stress. I mean, there's still going to be some shit. But you're never, any anytime you are stressed and you can't sleep, I will guarantee it's because you're violating one of your own values. And that's what the issue is. So when you dial that in and you fix it and you address it, it goes away. You know, so if that means speaking to somebody that you don't want to speak to or having this critical conversation that you just don't want to have or making this one move you really don't want to move or turning this down, you know, that you really don't want to turn down because it's a hell of a lot of money. Um, you dial that in and then it, it moves forward. So that's that's the best advice I have to answer the question that you proposed as far as that goes is how do you keep moving forward, you know, with all that when things are, and when those things are in place, how can you not? You know, how, how can you quit when those are in place? Because that's you. You know, that's, that's your inner spirit pushing you forward for what you were put on this earth to do. How the f- how can you not? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Wow. I almost never go back and listen to our podcast. I'll probably come back and listen to this episode. Cool. Good. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I think really that's a good place to end that. Fog me up. I'm like, hard, <laughs> hard, 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 to top, hard to top that, I am man. going but, home and I am like whipping out my notebook. I got. It was, man, no, it's recorded. You don't need no notebook. It's funny as I was working on, I, I am not joking at all. I can go back and show these guys. I was working on some core values. I was actually writing it out on the airplane ride here. And the fact that you brought that up and just kind of came out. That's the best that's way sign. to do it. That, that no. is the absolute 100% best way to do it because no. at least it's going to show you what your internal ones are. Now, from a company standpoint, you're going to have to go re-message them. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. there's more than just you. You need to message it in a yeah. plural instead of a singular. Yeah. Then it has to mean something to everybody and, and, and so forth. Yeah. But that's, that's where it comes from. Phenomenal. Uh, Dave, where can people learn more about uh, you and, and what you do? EliteFTS.com. Um, I got a Twitter page. <laughs> Here we go with this Twitter page shit again. <laughs> you, 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 yeah. You're pretty much either under the bar, is you personally yeah, yeah. on all the places? <laughs> you know, sport. Well, I just heard you say it. Two yeah, minutes. yeah or, under bar. Or, or elite FTS on, on yeah. most of the yeah, I'm very, I'm very accessible, so people can get a hold. I got it. We got a Q and A on our own on our own website, and then there's you know, Facebook, Twitter, all the other kind of stuff. So I'm very accessible. I'm not one of those guys that just. If somebody sends a tweet, I'm not going to blow off the tweet unless it's stupid. I mean, if if, if you're sending me, well, I'll tell you what. I mean, if you, you're asking for it, yeah. you don't know our audience. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if, if, if you're sending me some type of criticism, I'm not going right. to, you know, I'm not going to deal with that crap. But if you send me a question, I'll answer anybody's question. I don't yeah. think there's any th- such thing as a stupid question. You know, every, I mean, just stupid people. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, it's one of the things I said at the last seminar we did it was the sport training thing and i wasn't really comfortable speaking at it because i've never really trained athletes Mm -hmm. so you know it's power lifter so i let i let those guys do what they do but i introduced it and uh i guess i'll close on on this you know because this this is a big problem that i see in the industry as well when somebody asked you a question you know a lot of people will think Man, that's a dumb question. That's a stupid question. Or, man, I've been asked this question 10,000 times. I can probably say I've been asked, what do you do if you don't have a reverse hyper in a glute ham race? At least 100,000 times. And, you know, there's two ways to look at that. You can look at it like, you know what, just do a Google search. All right? That's one way to look at it. I'm not going to look at it that way. Because the way I'm going to look at it is it might be the first time you have ever asked me that question the reason you're asking me is because you value my opinion more than google that's an honor yeah so if somebody is going to ask you a question in the fitness industry about business or about training that's not an inconvenience it's an honor you know so take that for what it's worth and and honor the answer because it's the first time that person's asked it Maybe the 100th time or 1,000th time or 10,000th time you have, but it's their first. You know, would we all, 
you know, every time Back in Black comes on, you know, we all start banging our heads in the gym to train. <laughs> you know how many times they've had to sing that song? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Probably you know, It's an honor. Yeah. You know, so people need to start looking at things for what they really are yeah. instead of what they think they are. Yeah. yeah. What a great place to end. Dave, thank yeah. you so much for taking the time to be with us today. If you're listening to the show and you haven't subscribed, head over to the website, barbellbusiness.com. Get signed up. Head over to iTunes, subscribe, and leave us a five-star review. Join the conversation every week after the episode over at barbellshrug.com. This is also where you'll find new episodes of Barbell Shrugged, Technique Wad, Nuggets and Pearls, Barbell Business, Get Change, plus new articles every day on our daily blog, written by us, guests of the show, and some of the biggest names in strength and conditioning. So, go there and leave a comment now. Oh my gosh, wow, that's so cool. Yay, that's so awesome. Did you like this video? If so, subscribe to our channel and share this with your friends. And if you want even more free, awesome resources to help you reach your fitness goals, plus some updates that we only share over email, head over to barbellstruck.com and sign up for the newsletter.